actually, it's actually pretty quick. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the all new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander in the SEL package. But first and foremost, a huge shout out and thank you to Harrison Mitsubishi for giving me some time with this Outlander. Check out their inventory in the link below. They do have the new Mitsubishis, but they have an amazing selection of used inventory. They literally have everything here. You guys probably can't see, but they have the coolest Audi RS Q8 over there, which yeah, I've never seen one of those in person, so it's really cool. But yeah, they've got the new Mitsubishis, they've got crazy used inventory, so check them out. Let's get into the video. Now under the hood of the Outlander, we have a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed CVT automatic transmission. In terms of power outputs, it's good for 181 horsepower and then 181 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being 24 around town and then 30 on the highway. Now let's go over the front end of the Outlander. So first and foremost, this paint color is called Labrador Black Pearl, which is a huge win for me because that's one of my favorite dog breeds. And the fact that they have a color named after a black lab. I don't know, I think that's cool. But anyways, coming here down below, notice that you've got the full LED accent light here, and then you've got the headlights down below, and then the fog lights down below that. And you've got these parking sensors, which have been integrated into the front. And then I love how they've integrated the Mitsubishi logo right here into this portion of the grill, just from a stylistic perspective. And then notice you've got the camera here, and then with the sensor, and notice how they had the sensor kind of match everything with the rest of the grill, so it all ties in together. And then they kind of break things up with some silver accenting here at the bottom, and then you've got the chrome just up above. But yeah, overall, there's the front end of the Outlander. It definitely has this cool futuristic look to it. Now coming on the side here, we've got two 55 millimeter tires wrapped around 20 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. And they've kind of continued that theme with the black and the silver contrast onto these wheels as well. And these wheels look absolutely crazy. Just kind of like a bunch of knife edges that go there to the center portion. I really love the look of these and they just definitely stand out, especially for a stock wheel. You usually don't see stuff that's this crazy. And then they did plastic fender flares around the front and in the rear, but the rest of the car's all body painted. And then notice that they've also body painted the mirrors and then the door handles so it all matches. And then that really kind of makes the wheels pop out even more. Now let's pop into the rear of the Outlander. So first off, we've got this strap right here. And if you pull this up, you can see that it does come with a cargo cover from the factory. And you can also store it in there if you aren't using the cargo cover. And then another neat function is you have this latch right here, which if you pull that, then it throws down the second row seat. And then you have the strap here if you want to throw down the third row seat. So you basically just pull that strap and then that'll let you throw it down. And then this kind of gives you leverage and everything. And then also allows you to pull it back into place and look at the size of this headrest this is probably like the world's biggest headrest i think that's pretty neat and obviously it's full leather but other than that there's one more look before we uh finish things up finish things up in the rear of the Outlander. So first off, let's go over the taillights, which kind of remind me of Lamborghini taillights because of the Y shape that they have. But you can see you've got the LED tail lamps and then down below we've got more parking sensors here all along the rear. And then they do those venting pieces right there to kind of mimic the look of exhaust tips out of the bottom portion, which I think looks really good stylistically. As you can see, I'm here in the third row. If you're wondering how I got in, there's actually a slider here for the front seat where you can slide it forward and then you can lean it forward so then you can get through via that space right there. And if you need more space, you can just move up the driver's seat so that you can have even more space to get back here. But I'm skinny enough that I was able to kind of just squeeze back here. Now actually being back here, I would recommend reserving this for kids. And obviously that's typically the intention of third rows in vehicles. Uh, headroom's a little bit on the shorter side and then legroom as well. But again, a kid would fit back here perfectly fine and they'd be able to fit back here as well because I mean, I was able to easily kind of uh, squeeze through. Now here's the door panel in the rear. So first off, you get this beautiful leather at the top portion. You got the quilted design down below with all the stitching and then more leather down below that where you're actually gonna rest your arm. And then you've got the carbon fiber trim in front of that area. And then you've got some piano black trim just up above. And then here are the seats, which I love the look of the seats in the Outlander. Again, you've got the nice leather here with the nice leather bolsters and then the quilted design there in the center portion. But let's actually pop in. So stepping in, just kind of have to slide across. Uh, entry height's really good. And in terms of room back here, it's actually really solid. Tons of headroom here for the second row. Leg room's really good. And remember, I can slide that forwards and backwards if you want to have uh, more or less leg room for this row. And then we do have a couple of cup holders right here. 
and they even give you heated seats and then climate controls here for the second row so definitely a nice touch and that's all for the second row also look at this you get recline mode with these seats now let's go over the door panel here in the front. So again, you've got the beautiful leather here at the top with the quilted design just down below and then more leather where you're actually gonna rest your arm. And then we've got all of our window controls with the mirror adjustments and then you have the power folding mirror function. And then we do have the memory seats just up above with the door handle. I love how it just kind of looks like it's floating there. Definitely neat design wise. And then here are the seats at the front. So similar design as the seats in the rear, but notice that the bolsters are a little bit larger here on the front seats. Now they hold you in place nice, but they don't squeeze you so they're just really comfortable to sit in and then notice that you've got the adjustments there on the side of the seat and then we've got the pedal layout here at the bottom portion you've got that little opening for the rear hatch the steering wheel is manually adjustable Now let's start things off here with the steering wheel. So first off, they do soft touch leather at the top and at the bottom, and they do really nice perforated leather here on the sides. So you get a better grip. And this is actually the same exact leather that you get in an Audi R8. Like it's exactly the same feeling, which I think is awesome. But notice that you've got the paddle shifters here on the back again with that eight speed CVT. And then you've got your volume controls. And then this is to change the channels with the radio, voice command, phone controls, and then cruise control on the other side. And yeah, overall, just a really nice steering wheel. And here's a center gauge cluster in the Outlander. First off, it's a full digital readout, which looks really cool and modern. And then you do have a center screen, which you can scroll through a couple different menus, just to give you different bits of information on the vehicle itself. You can see, you can see the music, safety tech, all that kind of stuff. Really easy system to use. And I just love the overall formatting of the gauges. Now this also does come with some drive modes. So right now we're in the eco mode and then we can go from the eco into the normal mode and it gives you a really cool graphic. And then we have the tarmac mode, which this is gonna be kind of like your fun spirited driving mode. And then you've got your gravel and then your snow and then your mud and ruts. And I love how you just get that cool animation in the center for each of the different drive modes. I definitely think that's a neat little thing actually seeing the Outlander in the environment. So it kind of tells you what the mode is at the top, but then it also shows you what the mode is. Now we have the center infotainment system here first off we're going to pop it into reverse so you guys can see the backup camera you've got that bird's eye view that shows you everything and then notice with the backup camera the trajectory lines do turn with the steering wheel so just a really nice system overall and then it also does come with the parking sensors in the front and the rear as we saw earlier now as for the rest of the infotainment system notice you've got your analog controls here at the bottom portion they're kind of like your shortcut button so if i want to go to the map for example well you just press the map button but then i'm like yeah no i want to go back to the main menu you've got the main menu button and then you even have more shortcut buttons here at the bottom so they kind of double down with all of that but overall it's a really easy infotainment system to use they've got nice shortcut buttons it is a touch screen uh, but again because they double down on the controls you can kind of use whatever you want and then we also have this camera button which as you guys can see, you've got the view out the front and those trajectory lines also turn. So if you ever do take this off-roading from a camera system perspective, it's solid. And then if you're gonna shut that off, you just press the camera button again, it'll show you another viewpoint and then press it again, another viewpoint. And then finally, it'll go back to the infotainment system. Now down below here, we've got our climate section. So we do have heated seats here for the front passengers. And then remember this does have a tri-zone climate because you have the two climate zones here for the front and then the climate for the rear, which notice you can adjust that with those buttons right there. The temperature dials are for the front. And then we'll move this aside, sorry about that. But notice we've got a couple of USBs right here. You've got a 12 volt and then we have a wireless phone charger on top of that. We have the first part of the center stack right here. So first off we have the shifter for that CVT automatic. Really easy to use, just press that button on the side, pull it down for drive, press the button on the side, push it up for reverse. And then if you can go into the manual mode, pull it down again, uh, go into the M mode. And then again, you just use the paddle shifters for that. And when you go, want to go into park, just press the P. I really like this trim right here that's all around it. And then this is the drive mode select dial here and notice it does come with the hill descent control. You've got your parking brake right here and then the auto hold and then a couple of cup holders. And yeah, I think overall, just like how that looks aesthetically is definitely nice. We've got the center console here, which if we lift that up, you guys can see storage space in there is really good. And then it is covered with leather. So it doubles as a nice armrest. And notice with the hold dash, they have the leather that goes all the way across and then up above here with the nice stitching. And then if we open up the glove box pretty normal size glove box for the segments and that's all for that area but just enjoy the view that looks really nice now up here we actually do get a sunglass holder and then the headliner actually matches the rest of the coloration of the car they did a lighter colored headliner which i really appreciate some manufacturers won't have the headliner match but this all flows together which is nice 
Now that we're done going to the interior on this Outlander, let's quickly get into the pricing. So in terms of pricing, this particular Outlander and the SEL package with all the options it has, stickers for about $35,000. That all being said, let's take it out and see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the Outlander. So first off, visibility over the hood is actually really good. You have a large windshield, but on top of that, because of the front end design, you can very easily tell where the hood ends at the front end. There's your visibility through both the mirrors. They do have blind spot monitoring. And then here's throughout the rest of the rear. And that all being said, let's set off. So we are about to set off here in the Outlander and so far I really love the feel of the new Outlander. Definitely feels like a more upscale car than the price point would suggest and I mean in today's market with how crazy car sales are that's definitely what you want is a little bit more bang for your buck and the Outlander definitely provides that and that is the most unique, listen to the turn signal. That is the most unique turn signal indicator sound I have ever heard. I've never heard anything quite like that before. I kind of like it actually, but let's actually get up and go here with the Outlander. Steering super light and we'll kind of see how this goes from a ride quality and road noise perspective. So first off, actually getting up, it's really smooth. Uh, it doesn't really, I mean, going over that manhole cover and we'll go over another manhole cover. Yeah, it doesn't upset it. They did really a really good job in terms of the tuning with the suspension on this and all that. It definitely just smooths everything out in a really, really nice way. And I'm kind of like purposely driving over these to see. Yeah, it's really good from a suspension standpoint. And then in terms of a noise standpoint, we are kind of in a busier area for a traffic perspective. And so there's a little bit more noise coming from other cars. And uh, it usually it's pretty windy down here. Uh, but you don't notice it. The cabin actually is very well insulated. So you definitely do get that luxury car feel when you are just driving this around. Now I am gonna pop it over into the tarmac mode. Instantly uh, downshifts, so you can say that obviously it's a CVT, so it doesn't technically have gears, but uh, CVTs are so good nowadays that they can make it feel pretty close to a normal torque converter automatic. Turn in's really nice. It doesn't feel crazy big or anything like that. And actually, it's actually pretty quick. Um, Obviously, you guys heard the power figures, 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. So I wasn't expecting this to be crazy quick, uh, but unlike most CVTs, the uh, trans, I can't really call them gear shifts, but I'll just call them the transitions. The transitions are actually very quick and seamless. And so it actually puts down the power really well and it makes it feel quicker. There you go. We've got the lane departure assistance, which was going off because obviously I kind of went over just a little bit. And it's crazy the amount of safety tech that this has too. Brakes are really nice. They don't feel weird or anything like that. Uh, it just feels like a really nice, well put together car for sure. And we'll kind of get... Hey, you guys can see just how seamless those are. This is definitely one of the nicest, if not the nicest CVTs that I have ever driven here uh, for a review. It just is really smooth and seamless. I'm gonna pop it back over into the normal mode uh, to kind of cap things off. And this is perfect. This will really show us. Yeah, it's so smooth over everything. It definitely feels more like a luxury vehicle. A lot of SUVs in this segment, uh, especially the back end will kind of jump all over the place a little bit uh, and sometimes you'll get not necessarily rattling but the SUV will kind of go over the place this doesn't do it it just feels nice and planted and that'll actually get me into summing things up here with the new Outlander so first off from an exterior styling perspective uh, the rear end is kind of more like normal SUV styling the front end they definitely went for a riskier styling thing and I love it definitely looks unique you instantly know that it's an outlander from the styling it doesn't look like all the other SUVs on the market and then in terms of the interior again you guys gotta remember this is not the fully loaded version and this is a really nice upscale interior and so it's just Again, it feels like I'm in a more expensive car than I am. And then in terms of the driving experience, the CVT is great, it's really seamless. It's more than enough power for what this is meant for. And so overall, I mean, 
Mitsubishi came out with a bang. They redid the Outlander and it really worked. This is such a nice car. Now that's gonna sum things up for our video on this 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander in the SEL package. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to Harrison Mitsubishi for giving me some time with this Outlander. Like I said before, they do have the new Mitsubishi product, but they have a ton of cool pre-owned vehicles. So definitely check out their inventory in the link below. I mean, look at that Porsche. That's definitely neat. I love the idea with the carbon fiber there in the center definitely looks really cool. But yeah, check them out and I'll see all of you in the next video.